long, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Um, I think it is afternoon in India. So I wish every, everybody good afternoon or uh, good morning if you're in, in America, maybe good evening if you're in China or uh, also good afternoon in South Africa. It is a pleasure for me to participate to this uh, BRICS meeting. It is a shame that we cannot travel to India at this time. Uh, hopefully next meeting uh, we will be able to get together physically and, uh, and cherish for the end of the pandemic. Um, my name is Paolo Bicione and I'm the chairman for this session where the main speaker is uh, our colleague Luna Lomonaco, uh, who you probably can see on your screen. Luna is, um, is an Italian colleague who has lived in Brazil for the last uh, seven or eight years now. Um, Luna is originally from Italy where she obtained her bachelor's degree in Padua which is uh, located in the north of Italy. And during her bachelor degree, she visited also the University of Barcelona in Spain with one of these uh, Erasmus scholarships. These are scholarships given by the European community. And uh, then she took her PhD in Denmark, in Roskilde, Roskilde University, under the supervisor of Kast Karsten Pedersen and uh, also during her PhD, she spent one semester in Toulouse in France. After her, taking her PhD, also Luna traveled to several, uh, several international um, um, academic centers, including one semester in Beijing in China at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, Stony Brook in the United States of America, and then finally, in 2014, she moved to Brazil and she came to Sao Paulo as a postdoc first and then as a professor, as, as an associate professor, until last year, 2020, where she moved to IMPA, which is the Institute for Pure and Applied Mathematics in Rio de Janeiro. And by the way, I think on the web page, uh, Luna's address is still... Um, um, uh, University of São Paulo, which was the case, in fact, when she was invited a couple of years ago, but now she's, she's a professor at IMPA. Let me also mention that in the last three years, Luna won the L'Oreal Prize for Women, Women in Sciences in 2018, and the, and the uh, Brazilian Mathematical Society Prize in 2019, and also the Umalka Prize in 2020. Umalka is the union of, of uh, um, Latin American and Caribbean mathematics, okay? So uh, all, in spite of the fact that she's a very young speaker, she has a very strong uh, uh, international career. And I'm very pleased to, uh, um, to introduce her today. The title of her talk is uh, Mating Quadratic Maps with the Modular Group. So after this long introduction, I give the word to Luna. Luna, you have about 45 minutes for your talk. And thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much, Paolo, for the very nice introduction. And thank you very much uh, to everybody for being here, listening to me. And uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, let me share my slides. OK. Um, I would really like to be there in person, uh, but yeah, these years are weird year. So I contact myself to be here remotely. Uh, I will tell you today about a pretty long story because uh, it's a joint uh, project that I've been doing with Sean Bullet. by uh, Bullet by Queen Mary University, and it lasted uh, about 10 years. And it's about uh, mating quadratic maps with the modular group. 
So in this talk, we are going to speak about two words, the word of uh, iteration of rational maps and the word of uh, clanging groups, in particular the modular group, and see how they come together. Okay. So let's start speaking about the iteration of rational maps and about um, the clanging groups. So if we have a rational maps, this is a map R of Z, which is a P of Z over a Q of Z, where P and Q are polynomial, that uh, goes from the Riemann sphere to the Riemann sphere, we can see what happens in the Riemann sphere under the dynamics of this map. So we consider, we define the orbit of a point zeta in the Riemann sphere as the sequence of iterates of zeta under the map R. This is zeta, R of zeta, R of R of zeta, R of R of R of zeta, R of R of R of, and blah, 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 blah. And we want to see what happened to the different points. In particular, if two points start uh, are nearby, will they stay nearby forever? And uh, well, the set of points that if they start nearby, they stay nearby forever is called the Fatu set. More um, precisely is the set of points in the Riemann sphere around which the family of iterates it forms a continuous, equicontinuous family. Uh, so points that start together will stay together forever and ever. And the complementary of this set in the Riemann sphere is the Julia set, which is the set of points with chaotic behavior. Let's look at um, in, at an example, a specific example, it happens that the dynamics of rational maps of degree one, it's a bit boring because if you have a Mobius transformation on the Riemann sphere, you just look for the fixed points of the, your Mobius transformation and this will tell you everything. So it's a bit boring. And hence we ask for our rational map to have degree at least two. So every point has two pre-images. Um, counting with multiplicity, of course. So, if we consider rational maps of degree two, probably the easiest example is the example of quadratic polynomials. And uh, possibly the easiest quadratic polynomial is the map uh, Q0 of zeta is zeta square. Let's see what happens in the Riemann sphere when we iterate this map. The point zero which is here, is fixed. Zero squared is fixed. And squared is zero and squared is zero. If we take a point in the unit uh, disk, in the open uh, disk, and we start iterating it, we see that its modulus becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Let's make an example. Let's take one half. It's here. One half, if we square it, is one quarter. And if we square it, is one over 16. And if we square it, is something even smaller. It will tend eventually to zero. And this will happen for every zeta r e to the i zeta for r less than 1. All these points will eventually be mapped to 0. We'll get a, a modulus smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. In particular, if two points start nearby, they will keep being nearby and together go to 0. The same will happen if uh, for the zeta outside the unit disk. This is zeta equal r e to the i zeta with r strictly bigger than one. If we start, let's make an example. Let's take zeta equal two. 
2 squared is 4. And 4 squared is 16. And 16 squared it's bigger than 16 and eventually it will go uh, closer and closer and closer to infinity if we consider minus 2 and we square it uh, it goes to 4 and uh, squared 16 all the points outside the unit disk we, uh, when we square them we'll get the modulus bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and they will all escape to infinity so the Phil Julia set in the uh, the photo set in this case is composed by the unit disk, the open unit disk, and the complement of the unit disk in the Riemann sphere. While the Julia set, it's the unit circle. Nobody, uh, all the points in the unit uh, circle have different dynamics. If we consider a neighborhood of one, for example, the point one is fixed. One squared is one. If we take one plus epsilon, the point will converge to infinity. And if we take one minus epsilon, the point will converge to zero. If we take a point on the unit circle, E i theta, With theta irrational, this point will go around the unit circle forever and ever and never come back. But if theta is irrational, it will come back eventually. So if we take a neighborhood of one, all those points there will do different things. They don't go together. And this is why the unit circle is in the Julia set. OK. Now, let's consider uh, briefly the most famous, probably, a family of rational maps in complex dynamics. This is the family of quadratic polynomials. As I told you before, uh, we require to our rational map to have degree at least two. Uh, and the easiest example are the example of degree two polynomials. And we can normalize degree two polynomials by putting the critical point to zero, and hence we get maps of this form, qc of zeta equals zeta square plus c. And if we have a quadratic polynomial on the Riemann sphere, infinity is fixed. Infinity uh, square plus c, it's infinity. And it's not just fixed, but it's uh, attracting, actually super attracting. It attracts the points nearby very fast. What does it mean? That if we have a point near infinity and we square it and uh, do plus C, the modulus uh, will become bigger. So this point will go even closer to infinity. So infinity is attracting, super attracting, and it has a basis of attraction which we denote by A of infinity, where the basing of attraction is the set of points that will be eventually be attracted by infinity. And uh, in this context, we can, def um, it makes sense to consider the set of points with bounded orbit. This is the set of points that will never escape to infinity. Or, uh, more easily, the complement of the basin of attraction of infinity. To this set, this set is called the field Julia set. And uh, one can prove that the Julia set is the common boundary between the field Julia set and the basin of attraction of infinity. Here, I drew the field Julia set for several quadratic polynomials. This is for the map uh, Q0 of zeta that we saw before, zeta square, uh, zeta goes to zeta square, so C is equal to zero. Here is for C equal one quarter, so this is the map zeta goes to zeta square plus one quarter. Here is uh, a C is one quarter plus epsilon.
And the first thing that we can see is that here the field Julia set is connected, here is also connected, while here the field Julia set is not connected. Actually, it's completely disconnected, it's a counter set. So, in this situation, it makes sense to consider the set of parameters for which the field Julia set is connected. The set of C complex numbers such that the field Julia set of QC is connected. And the set we call the, the connectedness locus, the, the place of connectedness. And in the case of quadratic polynomials, this set is called the Mandelbrot set. And it's this beautiful fractal. Zero lives here. One quarter lives here. And one quarter plus epsilon lives outside here. Okay. Um, so, if we are uh, near infinity, um, and we consider the map zeta squared plus c, but if we take a point uh, zeta very close to infinity with modulus very, very, very big, if we square it, and then we add c, um, the plus c is not very important because of very big number, uh, when we square it, it becomes much, much, much bigger, and the plus c is kind of neglectable. And actually, it's not just kind of a, a neglectable, it exists a map, a conformal map, called the Butcher map phi, which conjugates the dynamics of a, a quadratic polynomial near infinity to the map zeta goes to zeta square. What am I saying? I'm saying that near infinity, the dynamics of your polynomial, the QC of zeta, is the dynamics of the leading coefficient. The map zeta goes to zeta square. And it happens that if our field Julia set is connected, the Butcher map extends to the whole basin of attraction of infinity. This means that if we consider the dynamics of the polynomial zeta square plus one quarter, this guy, his field Julia set is this in black, it's called the cauliflower, and the basing of attraction of infinity is the complement. And on the basing of attraction of infinity, your map is conformally conjugated with the map zeta goes to zeta square. It means that the dynamics outside your field Julia set is the dynamics zeta goes to zeta square. So we have inside the dynamics zeta goes to zeta square plus one quarter and outside the dynamics zeta goes to zeta square. And it happens that if the field Julia set is locally connected, which is the case in this for example, where it's connected, then the uh, inverse of this map extends to the boundary, meaning that the dynamics on the boundary it's the dynamics zeta goes to zeta square. Well, since we are on the circle, zeta goes to two zeta. Okay? This will be very important later. Okay. So far, we spoke about quadratic polynomials. And uh, uh, the family of, of polynomials is a family of hyperbolic maps. What do I mean by this? Um, in complex dynamics, you say that a map is hyperbolic if it is expanding, if there exists a metric such that it's expanding on its Julia set. Equivalently, if all critical points, finite critical points, are attracting to um, uh, attracting cycles. Um, and it happens that if we are outside the Mandelbrot set, all the maps are parabolic, all the maps are hyperbolic, sorry. Um, and the biggest conjecture in one complex uh, dynamics is that 
all the maps in the interior of the Mandelbrot set are hyperbolic. Um, so polynomials are deeply hyperbolic maps. And uh, for this talk, we're interested in the parabolic counterpart of quadratic polynomials. Later, we will see why. And this is given by the family per 1, 1. The family per 1, 1 is the family of quadratic rational maps with uh, one parabolic fixed point at infinity with multiplier 1 and critical points at plus and minus one. In Milner notation, we can write them as maps of the form P A of zeta, zeta plus one over zeta plus A, with A a complex number. Actually, for being precise, a pair one one is not a set of maps, but is a set of equivalence classes. The set of equivalence classes under conformal conjugacy. Uh, this is because PA is conformally conjugated with P minus minus A, where the conjugacy is the map that uh, interchanges the critical points, plus and minus one. And so we just keep track of the conjugacy class. OK, but anyway, everybody here inside has infinity fixed. Uh, but this time is not attracting, it's parabolic, meaning that there is an attracting direction and a repelling direction. But anyway, it has a basin of attraction, which is the set of points attracting by infinity. And we can define, in this case, the a field Julia set of a map in pair 1, 1 as the complement of the basin of attraction of infinity, exactly like for polynomial. So the set of points with bounded orbit. Here I draw three examples of field Julia set for three different maps in per 1, 1. Here we see infinity. And here is the basing of attraction of infinity. This is the pre-image. And the black is the complement of the basing of attraction of infinity. This is the set of points with bounded orbit, the field Julia set. Here uh, we have another example. Here there is infinity. Here in red, the basing of attraction. And in black, the field Julia set. And again, we can define the connectedness locus as the set of parameters, B actually, where B is 1 minus A squared in order to keep track just of the conjugacy class and not of the maps in order to identify a uh, plus and minus a uh, such that the field Julia set of the PA correspondent is connected. And this connectedness locus is called the parabolic Mandelbrot set and is this guy. And uh, um, there is a result from uh, Carson Peterson and Pascal Hoche saying that the Mandelbrot set is homeomorphic to the parabolic Mandelbrot set. So this guy is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. OK, I told you that in the case of polynomial, the dynamics outside the field Julia set, if the field Julia set is connected, uh, it's the dynamics of the leading coefficient of the map zeta goes to zeta square. In this case, I proved uh, in my thesis that the dynamics outside the field Julia set is given by this map, this Blaschke product. And uh, this map is topologically conjugate to the map uh, zeta goes to zeta square on the circle. Meaning what? Meaning that if our uh, Julia set is connected and locally connected, the dynamics on the Julia set is the dynamics of the map x goes to 2x. OK? In this case, like for polynomial. This will be very important in a couple of slides. OK, so let's leave uh, um, now the word of iteration of rational maps. And let's enter the word of uh, groups. 
Let's consider PSL2C, which is the group of two times two matrices with complex uh, entries and determinant one under the equivalent relation uh, plus minus identity. Uh, we can see the elements of PSL2C uh, as Möbius transformation from the Riemann sphere to the Riemann sphere. Uh, zeta goes to uh, A zeta plus B over C zeta plus D with determinant different than zero. And uh, as I told you before, the dynamics of a single Möbius transformation, it's boring. So what do we do? We consider groups made by bench of different Möbius transformations. And these groups are called the Kleinian groups. Or more formally, Kleinian groups are discrete subgroups of PSL to C. We take a bench of Möbius transformation, we compose them in all possible ways, and we see what happens. And it happens something similar as what happens in the case of rational maps. Indeed, the action of a Kleinian groups on the Riemann sphere gives a partition of the Riemann sphere in two complementary sets. The ordinary set, which is of set of uh, a zeta in the complex plane where the elements of the group form a normal family or are key continuous, and the limit set, which is uh, the complementary. Now, in this talk, uh, we are interested in one particular claiming group, which is the modular group. PSL to zeta, uh, which is a Kleinian group with generator tau 1 of zeta, zeta plus 1, and tau, tau 2 of zeta, zeta over zeta plus 1. And uh, here I took the um, tessellation of the upper half plane under the modular group. What am I saying? I'm saying that, uh, okay, the ordinary set for the modular group is the upper and lower half plane, and the limit set is the um, real line. But since uh, uh, we see the same in the upper half plane and in the lower half plane, we just consider the upper half plane. And here we see the tessellation, what it means. This thing in uh, gray, is a fundamental domain for the modular group. Meaning that iterating this piece, we can cover the whole upper half plane under these two guys. Indeed, if we iterate this half tree under zeta plus one, we cover these and these and these and these. And if we iterate under tau two, this uh, gray part goes here and then goes, I guess, here, but I don't promise. And then here, anyway, I mean, it it fills everything till here down. So iterating this piece, but under these two guys, we get the old upper plane. OK. So. The world of iteration of rational maps on the Riemann sphere and the world of finitely generated Kleinian groups on the Riemann sphere are not such a different worlds. And there is actually um, a, a dictionary between these two worlds, what is called the Sullivan Dictionary, as Sullivan was the person who first realized these big similarities. Uh, in this, in the context of the talk, we're just interested in the first two entries of the dictionary, meaning the fact that the iteration of a rational map on the Riemann sphere uh, gives a partition of the Riemann sphere in two complementary sets, the set of normality, which is the FATU set, where the points all go together, and the uh, chaotic complement, which is the Julia set. And in the, the case of finitely generated Kleinian groups, the iteration of a the Kleinian group also gives a partition of the Riemann sphere 
into two complementary sets. The set of normality, which is the set uh, um, of points uh, about which the action of the group is normal, and uh, the um, messy complementary, which is the limit set. In the case of groups, these sets are the ordinary set and the limit set. In the case of maps, these sets are the Fatu sets and the Julia sets. But the definition are the same. So these words are not so different. In particular, there is a, an object, a messy object, a correspondence, which can be a map and, and can be a group. So what is a correspondence? A holomorphic correspondence, F on the Riemann sphere, is a multi-valued map, uh, F uh, from zeta to W, defined by a, the zero of a polynomial. In this talk, we are just interested in two true holomorphic correspondence, meaning that uh, every zeta has two images, and every W has two pre-images. And uh, um, in this case, we need our polynomial to have degree 2 in zeta and degree 2 in w. And how do we construct our correspondence? Well, a polynomial, the zero of a polynomial in degree 2 in zeta and in w define an algebraic surface. So this is p zeta w. Equal zero. Now we consider the projection into the Riemann sphere where zeta lives. The projection in the Riemann sphere where W lives. And um, the correspondence f is the object that associates to the zeta on this Riemann sphere, the w in this Riemann sphere. So for each zeta here, there are two w here upstairs that kill our polynomial. And their projection are the two images. While for each w here, there are two zeta here upstairs that kill the polynomial. And uh, the projection here are the two pre-images. So these objects are pretty messy because each point has two images and then we start iterating it and it becomes messy pretty soon. But they are useful, why? Because we can write a rational map of degree n as a n to one correspondence, just taking as polynomial. Well, if it, your map is P over Q, you take as a polynomial a WQ minus P. And uh, if you if we have a Kleinian group with n generators, a gamma J with J between 1 and N, we can write it as a, a N to N correspondence by taking as a polynomial the polynomial that kills all these rational maps. The product of uh, W, C, J, Zeta plus D, J minus uh, A, J, Zeta plus B, J product for J going between 1 and N. OK? So a correspondent can be a rational map. A correspondence can be a group. Now the question is, can a correspondence behave like a Kleinian group? and a rational map at the same time. And this question has started being in investigating in the 90s by Sean Bullett and Chris Penrose. Uh, and they start wondering this when they plotted the limit set of a particular family of correspondences, and they saw this picture. And well, the picture looks like two copies of a field Julia set with around 
the tessellation of the modular group. And so they started wondering, uh, can correspondences behave like modular group and quadratic polynomial uh, at the same time? Or more technically, can we make uh, quadratic maps and rational and um, Kleinian groups in a correspondence? So, what is a mating? Roughly speaking, a mating between two objects, A and B, is an object C that behaves like A in an invariant subset of the domain and as B in the complement. And uh, matings exist in the world of polynomials. Mating two polynomials, which are matable, gives you a rational map. And matings also exist in the world of Kleinian groups. Actually, they started in the world of Kleinian groups. And uh, they thought that this was a mating between a quadratic polynomial. They thought that this was uh, the two copy of a field Julia set of a quadratic polynomial with the tessellation of the modular group around. So they defined mating between a quadratic polynomial and the modular group as a 2 2 correspondence. 2 2 because the modular group written as correspondence is, uh, gives a 2 2 correspondence such that there exists a completely invariant open simply connected region where the dynamics of your correspondence is conformally conjugated to the dynamics of the generator of the modular group on the upper right plane. And the complement is a, a set which is uh, a, well connected because they, they start um, in the definition, they consider connected uh, quadratic polynomial with connected field Julia set. So the complement is a set which is the one point union of two sets, lambda minus and lambda plus, where on lambda minus the dynamics of your correspondence is the dynamics of a quadratic polynomial, and on uh, lambda plus is. Uh, the dynamics is the dynamics of an inverse quadratic polynomial. So they define this thing and then start wondering, OK, do this thing exist? And asking yourself whether these things exist actually has two sides, because uh, on one side, you need to answer, you need to wonder, are these things possible? This is, can we mate? a uh, quadratic map and a modular group. This is, does the dynamics on the boundary, on the Julia set of a quadratic map, uh, match the dynamics on the limit set of a Kleinian group? And in case, do we have some candidate family of correspondences where these things could uh, be? And in case we answer positive these questions, uh, then we can wonder, OK, but does it happen? If it, so not just because something is possible, this something happen. Uh, so does this something happen? Do, is there exist a family of correspondences such that every member of this family is actually a mating between a quadratic map and the module group? And in case we can ask more, uh, is the connectedness locus of this family homeomorphic to the connectedness locus of the family of rational maps uh, that we, this correspondence, are making with? Um, okay. So, Sean uh, and Chris uh, in, uh, in the 90s uh, solved uh, these kinds of problems. And then they tried very hard to uh, solve uh, the second class of problems uh, uh, for about 30 years, but they were uns uh, unsuccessful. I entered the story answering this question. But let me brief explain you that yes, it's possible. So there exists 
a map, which is the Minkowski map, which conjugates the dynamics of the generator of the modular group on the negative real line to the map x goes to 2x, the doubling map, which if you remember, this is the dynamics that we have on the field Julia set of a connected and locally connected quadratic polynomial, and also a connected and locally connected member of per 1, 1. And the same map uh, conjugate uh, the action of the generator of the modular group on the positive real action, real axis, with the map x goes to x over 2. This means that we can fit here the field Julia set of a quadratic polynomial or a member of pair 1, 1, and we can fit here the dynamics of uh, the inverse of a quadratic polynomial on its field Julia set, or the dynamics of a member of pair 1, 1, the inverse of the member on the field Julia set. Okay, and then they say that uh, yes, if uh, meetings between quadratic polynomials, actually quadratic maps, uh, with connected uh, field Julia set and the modular group lie in this family of correspondence. And these they found out by looking what are the conditions for a, a correspondence modular group. And they saw that this correspondence has to satisfy some properties. Uh, and if you want uh, your correspondence to behave like a, the modular group uh, on an open set, uh, but for analytic continuation, it's better that it keeps satisfying these properties. They made a couple of computations and they ended up with this analytic. Um, family. And here I draw um, three examples of uh, limit set for member of this family. Well, it happens that for everybody in the family, the point at zero, which is the point where the uh, the backward limit set and the forward limit set connects is a fixed and parabolic. How is the dynamics? It happens that for everybody in this family, there is a half plane invariant by forward iteration. So this is sense here inside. And actually, as a one to two map, this line is sent here and it's sent here. And this is sent here and then here. And we can define the forward limit set as the intersection of images of this half plane. And it's this guy. And it happens that between uh, this half plane and the complementary, there is an involution. The map is conjugated with itself by an involution. So uh, here, the correspondence behaves as a two to one map. So this thing has image this whole line, is mapped to this whole line. And this image and this line is mapped again to the whole line. Uh, this set is mapped to all this half plane, two to one. And the backward limit set is the intersection of pre-images of this half plane. And by dynamics, here you are entering, here you are going away. So this point fix the intersection between the uh, backward and forward limit set is parabolic with multiplier one. Okay, here I show you several limit set. Uh, the limit set is a 
the backward limit set, the union, the forward limit set, all this set. So here there are examples of some different limit set. These are all connected. This is the only disconnected one. And this is the connectedness locus for the family. This is the set of parameters A, such that the limit set of FA is connected. So this guy lives here. This guy, no, this guy lives here. Uh, this guy lives here. This guy lives here. Uh, ah. And this guy lives outside. OK? And um, well, Sean and Chris conjecture that the family FA contains a mating between the modular group and quadratic polynomial with connected Julia set uh, for every quadratic polynomial with connected Julia set, and that the connectedness locus, this guy, for this family is homomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. And they managed to prove it for a, they managed to prove that uh, the family, this family of correspondence contains mating between the modular group and a lot of quadratic polynomial, but they couldn't prove it for everybody. Why? Because how they prove it? In order to prove that you have a polynomial, uh, something behaving like a polynomial, you use uh, something which is called the polynomial like mapping. Uh, and for using this, you cannot have a parabolic fixed point there. So what they do? They start by your family of, uh, our family of correspondences. They break the parabolic fixed point into two fixed points uh, here and here. They apply polynomial like mappings to this tool, and then they try to come back. And yes, this is something you can do, but I mean, your family of correspondences has a persistent parabolic fixed point. Everybody, for every A, you have a parabolic fixed point here. So breaking the parabolic fixed point every time, do stuff and then coming back, it may work, but it's not the optimal solution. You may try to deal with the parabolic fixed point. And this is basically when I entered the picture, when I started saying, well, guys, maybe these objects are matings between quadratic maps and the modular group. But since the modular group is deeply parabolic, and here you, we have a parabolic fixed point, maybe the, the maps we are mating with are parabolic. So the maps in pair 1, 1. And this is actually uh, the true story. We defined uh, with shown a mating between a rational map in pair 1, 1 and the modular group as uh, a 2-2 uh, two -two correspondence, FA, such that on the backward limit set, your correspondence uh, has the dynamics of a member of pair 1, 1 about its field Julia set, hence on the forward limit set of the inverse. And uh, in the complement, we have an open simply connected set uh, where the dynamics of your quadratic uh, of, uh, correspondence is conjugate conformally to the dynamics of the generator of the modular group on the upper half plane. And we proved that, yes, for every A in the connectedness locus, the correspondence, our correspondence, FA, is a mating between the modular group and a rational map of the form a PA of zeta, is yes, so zeta plus 1 over zeta plus A, with A complex. And here is a picture for showing the, the theorem that illustrates the theorem. This guy lives here, is the center of the main hyperbolic component of M gamma, which we call the modular Mandelbrot set. And here your correspondence is conjugate on this set to the dynamics of this map of pair 1, 1, where the parameter is the center of the main hyperbolic component on the W-pinched neighborhood 
of its field reset. So the dynamics here is the same dynamics as here. And here, that is the center of the period two components on a neighborhood of your uh, backward limit set, uh, you have the same dynamics as uh, the member of pair one one in the center of the period two components. And this is the center of the period three components where you have the same dynamics uh, in the center of the period three component here. And while well, you see that the, the theorem induces a map between connectedness logic. And uh, we proved finally, it took 10 years, that this map is a homeomorphism. A dynamical, this is if I send, a, a, if I send a, this point to this point, the dynamics of my correspondence about the backward limit set uh, of this particular correspondence is conjugate to the dynamics of this particular member of pair one one about its field real set. And uh, so it's dynamical, it's conformal on the interior, and it extends to a homomorphism between uh, a pinched neighborhood. Pinched at the what we call the root. And this is because of a technical problem. But this together with a Carson and Pascal result tells you that yes, the conjecture was true. The connectedness locus, the modular Mandelbrot set, this is the connectedness locus for this family of correspondences, is homomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. And uh, ah, last thing I wanted to say, sorry, I'm three minutes late is that getting here we we also described completely dynamically these correspondences uh, creating a, a, a dictionary between uh, uh, the dynamics of quadratic polynomials and the dynamics of these quadratic correspondences and again we modeled these dynamics on the dynamics of quadratic polynomials instead of then the dynamics of uh, the rational maps uh, these correspondences are making off because quadratic polynomials have been much more studied and we know much more things about the quadratic polynomials. Uh, but yeah, we have a butcher map that uniformizes the complement of the limit set uh, to the complement to the upper half plane with the dynamics given by the generator of the modular group in the same fashion as for quadratic polynomial we there is a better map uniformizing the complement of the field Julia set to the complement of the unit disk and uh, conjugate the dynamics to the dynamics of the leading term. And uh, in case of quadratic polynomial, you have some tools which are external arrays that are very uh, useful. And uh, in our case, we don't have them, but we have external geodesics. This is we can pull back to this map geodesics on the upper half plane. And uh, we prove that periodic geodesic lens, every repelling a periodic point, actually, not just fixed. The fixed was easy. The periodic was very messy. It's the landing point of a periodic geodesic. And uh, we prove the Yokos inequality that tells you basically that these things, how these balls attached uh, to the, these things shrink uh, with respect to the component they are attached to. And uh, this is everything I wanted to tell you. So thank you for your attention. Well, um, Luna, thank you very much for this very nice and clear talk. Uh, beautiful pictures and uh, very deep results. And uh, uh, this was a great success. Thank you. I would like to encourage participants, especially students, to ask Luna any question. I'm sure that she would love to receive questions from the audience. So please, if you would like to ask a question, do not hesitate. Don't be shy and uh, ask. Would anybody from the live audience like to ask a question? Hello? 
Yes, sir. Maybe. Anna, how are you? Hi. Um, uh, I have a small doubt. I was uh, working on a project on the parallel implementation of the escape time algorithm. So, uh, like, what you have presented so far seems to be very useful for my project. So, is it fine if I contact, <laughs> contact you for the slides? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry, I hear, but it's um, the connection is not very. Uh, I, I don't really understand what you're saying. I'm sorry. Hello, hello, everyone. Yes, but can you speak slowly? Because I hear a lot of uh, noise with the. It, it comes a lot of noise. I'm sorry. Okay. So thank my, my, you. <laughs> my, my name is Sanjay. So. Uh, recently, I was working on a project on the parallel implementation of the SKT algorithm. So, mm -hmm. the procedure so far seems to be very useful for my project. So, is it fine if I contact you for the for the slides? Ah, yes, you can contact me. Don't worry. Yeah, my email is Luna Lo Monaco. Luna at impa.br. It's easy. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Would anybody else like to ask a question from the live audience? Please don't be shy. And uh, you can just, uh, you know, stand up and uh, come close to the, um, to the video camera and ask a question if you feel like. Also, I would like to invite the participants um, online. There are 25 participants. And uh, if any of you would like to ask a question, uh, please either write on the chat or turn on your microphone and ask. You're very welcome to do so. I do not see at the moment any reaction. So I assume. It's very, very clear. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, this is because your talk was extremely clear. So let me ask one more time. Um, all participants, both live and online, are very welcome to make the comments or ask questions that I'm sure Luna will be very happy to answer. Uh, yes. Okay. There's Nick Hale. He says, um, hi, Luna, you must be very relieved to approve the result after 10 years. What is the next challenge in this area for you? This is a question coming from Nick Hale. Thank uh, you, Nick. Well, more than a chat. Well, uh, there is something uh, Sean was uh, really wanted to look that was the complement of the uh, uh, modular Mandelbrot set in, uh, in C see the tessellation. And I'm also interested to that, but mostly for a different reason. Uh, more than the challenge, this is a dream. Uh, the biggest uh, conjecture in complex uh, dynamics is that uh, the Mandelbrot set is locally connected. And this is not because we really care about the topology of the Mandelbrot set, but because uh, uh, Duady and Hubbard proved that this would imply that uh, the would imply density of hyperbolicity. This is that, that the interior of the Mandelbrot set, all the parameters is associated with an hyperbolic map. And uh, we have a homeomorphism here between something which is different from the Mandelbrot set for the first time. I mean, this does do not come from maps. This comes from different objects that are more rigid. Uh, so the dream will be, for me, the big dream is studying the local connectivity of this set. 
But the thing is that what has been done for the Mandelbrot set, it's pretty technical, pretty specific, uh, and wouldn't work in this case. So, I mean, I would have to think about a different approach. In this way, it's more than a dream than a project. But uh, this is, to me, the most exciting. But then one can just look at the complement of this guy, and then one can look at generalizing these things. Yeah. This, what I'm drawing, uh, uh, is the discreteness locus of C2 times C3 groups. This is Kleinian groups where the, um, you have two generators, one of order two and one of order three. The modular group lives here. And uh, there are results that should prove that uh, there are matings between quadratic polynomials and uh, groups that live here. These hyperbolic groups and not the parabolic, but I mean, in the interior of this thing. So something that would be also very exciting would be trying to figure out what is, trying to study a C2 a, as a, a modular space where of matings between a, a groups of C2 and C3 and uh, maps polynomials in, in some cases, parabolic maps in some other cases, and try to see has uh, this uh, um, C2 parameter plane would uh, move uh, and what would, uh, what kind of correspondences you would see. But I mean, uh, all the three things that I said here are pretty deep things. I mean, it took me 10 years to uh, prove this homeomorphism. Uh, this homeomorphism. So, uh, they are all pretty deep, technical, and complicated uh, projects. Thank you, Luna, for your nice answer. I'm sure Nick must have liked it. Thank you, Nick, for asking the question. I see you're in South Africa. And um, would anybody else like to ask a question? Anybody either? Uh, since you are running a bit short on time, is it okay if we move on to the next talk? Yes, who cares? Okay, yes. Then uh, let's thank the speaker again. This was a very nice uh, lecture. Thanks a lot to everybody for uh, assisting. Thank you, Luna. Thank you.